Ghost Stories is a 2020 Hindi language anthology of four short horror films on Netflix, some of which have explicitly spiritual themes. I am a trainer of spiritual therapies and a spirit releasement therapist, so I'll explain some of these stories from my professional point of view. I'll look at key scenes and themes to sort out the facts from the fiction, identify exaggeration and cinematic license, and I'll do all this with full spoilers. My interest is in psychological and spiritual issues and in getting to a therapeutic resolution. So I'll focus mainly on the fourth film, which I thought was by far the most interesting because it presents a relatable case study that can occur in real life. I'll also look at the first film because it raises some interesting points and is a good point of comparison with the fourth film. It deals with similar issues, but the fourth film does a better job in every way. I won't cover the middle two stories. They both seem to want to work with psychological spiritual themes, but they both seem like fiction that's based on other fiction or artistic representations. And for me, they had very little connection to anything recognizable in real or spiritual life, and they didn't have any real relevance as a therapeutic case study. For me, they just didn't feel real in any way. The second film felt like an art school student's dream sequence, and the third film just felt like a zombie video game. The key idea of the remaining two ghost stories is that the spirit of a deceased person remains connected to the earth plane and interacts with the living. Now, in spirit releasement therapy, I don't use the term ghosts, and I make a distinction between two types of entities. So firstly, spirits. When anyone dies, their spirit leaves their body and they transition. The spirit for a time can connect and observe the earth plane on its way to finding the light and moving fully into the spiritual plane. And this process can take place over days or weeks. So story one represents an encounter with a spirit. Secondly, we have earthbound spirits. These occur when someone dies, but they miss the opportunity to go into the light after a few weeks. So they stay stuck in an in-between realm where they have a spiritual body, but they're still bound to the earth plane. They can still witness and interact with those on earth. So story four is focused on earthbound spirits. So we have two stories apparently about ghosts, but in fact they're about two different types of spirits. Story one interacting with a spirit is a very commonly occurring phenomenon in real life. Many with a recently passed loved one might have a dream where the spirit reassures them and says goodbye. Some may feel a friendly guiding presence in their waking consciousness. Some may spontaneously connect with a spirit during meditation, a healing session, a spiritual practice, or while actively developing psychic ability. So in spirit releasement therapy, we work with this natural ability many people have to communicate spiritually. But it's only when spirits become earthbound spirits that can create some issues and then require a therapeutic solution. In story one, a young nurse who's needy in her relationship tends to an old lady who's been neglected by her son. We discover the old lady passed away a few days ago and the young woman is seeing her spirit. The old woman died in another part of the house and her spirit appears to make sure that her body is found. Now, for me, these characters were one-dimensional with little meaningful relationship between them. I found this less of a horror story and more of some routine post-death administration. The only problem to solve was for the old lady to get a burial. The relation to and impact on the nurse's life was incidental. In real life, I'd expect this story to be more about a genuine relationship between the mother and son. In real life, I'd expect the mother could visit her son in a dream or connect with his spiritual energy and give him a feeling of things not being right. He may never realize why, but this could motivate him to check and discover her body. Now, perhaps she tried, but he was too self-involved, distracted, or blocked it out. If this is the case, then that's a form of resolution in itself. She gave him a chance to be conscious 
and perform a positive karmic act, but he, the son, couldn't do it. So she could realize this, forgive him, and then let go and go into the light. In real life, once a person leaves their body, they have an option to go into a loving, wise light and reunite with loved ones from this life or past lives as spiritual energies. This is the preferred and most common option, so very few souls would have any motivation to stay attached to their old, discarded, now deceased body, or to be around people that don't care for them, like the neglectful son or the nurse who doesn't know her or have any connection to her. The spirit of the old lady has much better options. So for me, this story hardly needs a therapeutic resolution. There's a naturally occurring one that's available to her, and in real life, I'd expect her to take that option, to reunite with her loved ones and the spiritual plane in the light. It may be nice to have her body found and have a funeral, so it can make sense she has an interest in seeing her body discovered to get some resolution, to help her complete that unfinished business and let go. But really, it's hardly worth sticking around for, and she'd most likely be happy to move on. In real life, I'd find it surprising if she could instead connect with this nurse in her full waking consciousness, who has no interest in spirits and no personal connection to her, and this nurse is highly self-involved and preoccupied. The idea that the old woman could connect and project a perfect visual image that can appear to be physically moved is fiction. It's a gross exaggeration that is using every inch of cinematic license. In real life, we perceive an earthbound spirit through the sixth sense, which we can only represent and approximate through the five senses. In cinema, this means mainly the visual sense. In real life, it's like a combination with an emphasis on feeling or knowing. The nurse might have felt drawn for reasons she couldn't articulate to the kitchen. Instead, she's terrified for herself and follows a creepy, pure visual to discover the body. I'm just not a fan of spirits being portrayed as visual beings with a physical presence, especially with seriously physical events like giving the spirit an injection or picking her up off the floor. You could argue it was a spirit-induced hallucination, but for me it's a weak argument and still a major exaggeration. As far as the film goes, this wasn't an incidental detail, but the whole setup of the story. The payoff it leads to is a spiritually, minimally relevant detail of finding her body. It likely would have been found anyway, and the old lady had better people and spirits to connect with and better places to go into the light rather than dragging the nurse into the kitchen. For me, there was little in the way of horror or real spiritual principles being illustrated. In the end, I was happy that Granny could finally go into the light so that she and we could finally get out of this story. For me, the fourth story was by far the best. It had the best developed characters, with genuine connections and recognizable grounded psychology and spiritual principles. This makes it a relatable case study that has many features that I would actually see in real life. And the spiritual principles it illustrate are accurate and interesting in many ways. The story opens with the house, which has an epic presence and is a character in itself. We see through Ira's eyes as she enters Dhruv's household. Things seem normal on the surface, just a touch off when Dhruv's devotion to his grandmother who passed away 20 years earlier extends to asking her for permission to marry Ira and talking to her as if she's alive. As viewers, we get the space to debate with Ira and her fun friend if it's basically sweet and can be accepted, or if it's just creepy and too weird so she better get out of there. They're fun, real type people, and they're making important life decisions, so there are stakes. It's aesthetically pleasing, it looks good, and it's no less scary because it's not all monochrome. The normality makes the creepy moments all the more jarring. It feels more real, not a dismissible art school dream sequence or a zombie video game. At 20 years dead, Granny is a genuine earthbound spirit, so this matches to an actual case study we could work on doing spirit releasement therapy. As a character, she has a charisma that would have given her a larger-than-life presence as a person, 
and as a spiritual presence after life. She has strong relationships and influence with her grandson and members of the household that make the whole story make sense too. She's a multi-dimensional character and has an interesting backstory. We learn her injury and eventual death was caused when Dhruv accidentally pushed her down the stairs while playing peekaboo when Dhruv was very young. Now Dhruv's childish ways and even calling her granny hints that part of him is psychologically stuck in this moment, unable to accept her death, clinging to her and a little infantile in his own personality. Dhruv and Shanti are clear about granny. She did not pass on, she only died. So why would anyone not move into the light and get stuck as an earthbound spirit? This can happen for a number of reasons in real life and many of them are illustrated in the film. Sometimes the spirit can feel a strong attachment to the people and place. Granny built the house and had many and strong connections with the family, the grandson and the staff like Shanti. Spirits can feel they have unfinished business and they can feel they have to stay to help themselves or to help others. They can respond to the strong invitation or request by a living person or people to stay on as a spirit. Through his parents and Shanti all clung to Granny. In real life all of this can be an accurate cause that causes the earthbound spirit to attach to the people in place. I actually do see people in real life like Truth who invite their granny or a loved one to attach and stay with them. But after some time they'll realize there are negative consequences and want to disinvite that spirit to release them. So they'll come to someone like me to get spirit releasement therapy. I'd then communicate with Dhruv so he understood that from his side he can release Granny. Then for most people they'll require a hypnotic state to access and communicate fully with Granny. Now in the film Dhruv is essentially in a hypnotic state and can communicate clearly as it is. For most people in a hypnotic state they would hear their Granny speaking in their own mind and then relay to me what she's saying. I can then discuss with the granny and have her realize that Drew's invitation has been withdrawn and that the appropriateness of her inviting or allowing herself to stay attached to Drew is now over so that the releasement can be done from both sides of the equation so that the earthbound spirit can move into the light and Drew can move on with his life. The reason this communication which can be an explanation or eventually a persuasion is required is because on both sides they can think that there are benefits or at least that there had been benefits. For young Dhruv it could have been comforting. As he grew it could have given him a sense of positive spiritual influence. But over the years as he holds too tight and too long to his granny's apron strings and her spirit it eventually damages them both. This leads to negative spiritual influences that might motivate him to come for a spirit releasement therapy session. He might have had bad dreams. He might become confused about his spirituality. He might find there's an inner conflict between his inner spiritual world and his outer progress in the physical world. So he feels held back in his life, blocked and underachieving. He may also find he starts to hear the earthbound spirits that are attached to Granny, all the miscellaneous spirits, and he may not want to communicate with them, but find he doesn't know how to turn them off. Ultimately, he'll realize his past spiritual intentions are now counterproductive and out of date. He may realize his seemingly loving relationship with his Granny and the spiritual world is blocking a potentially loving relationship with his fiance. The ultimate understanding is by clinging to your grandmother you may block out your chance to become a grandfather. In real life it can take people some time to realize this. It is the significant life events like a marriage or relationship problems that can trigger people and finally agree to release. So the timing of this film and the situation of the characters all makes a lot of sense. This is the compelling motivation people often need to change. The film does well to reflect that. In most cases when people realize it's got to a point where they have to choose to cling on to granny 
or move on with the new wife, they move on. But because this is a horror, the dead went out. So for me, this is the main area of cinematic license. In comedy, they say it's funny because it's true. In horror, it's scary because it's true. This story works for me so much better than the other three stories because psychologically and spiritually, much of this could actually happen. In real life, Granny could stay as an earthbound spirit. In real life, Ira is unlikely to be able to see Granny, especially not as clearly and indistinguishable from a living person as was portrayed in the first story with the nurse. In real life, earthbound spirits actually do have the power to influence the feelings and thoughts of others, and they could encourage them to act on their behalf. So earthbound spirits can affect the physical world in this indirect way, by connecting with the spiritual element of a living person and having them act on their behalf in the physical world. This is rarely shown in movies or fiction, but this is how it can work in real life. Ira is only able to see Granny when she becomes a spirit herself, and we learn that Granny is surrounded by many earthbound spirits. This too makes sense in real life. In spirit releasement therapy, I tend to work with a key earthbound spirit that's attached to a person like Granny is attached to Drew. What I then tend to find is that where there's one earthbound spirit, there tend to be a number of others. So normally we have a most significant one, then lesser spirits who are aware of each other and can be influenced by the more powerful earthbound spirit who they likely knew in life. So if they were followers of Granny in life, their spirits can continue to follow and remain earthbound, orbiting around the more powerful earthbound spirit. So this feature of the film is also accurate and possible in real life. I like the overall principles and spiritual lessons being communicated in this film. Be patient with other people's beliefs. Certainly there's no sense in losing your temper and making an outright attack. Whether you believe or not, still be polite and respectful. In many horror films, we're supposed to be afraid of the ghost. In this film, it can imply that we should be more afraid of our own anger, our own fear, our own mental limitations, our own unchecked emotions and outbursts. These have danger too for us karmically, as a soul, and as a whole healthy being. Now in real life, no ghost will ever kill us, but deeply insulting the beliefs of the living can be dangerous. Ira used a technique of cursing, confronting, and attacking, and that didn't work too well. Yet the response is still a bit of an exaggeration and a cinematic device that leads us into the horror movies genre of the scary bad ending. In real life, a story like this could very easily have a happy ending by using the principles of spirit releasement therapy, that instead of confronting a compassionate, that instead of not understanding, gather information and insights from all sides, work with other people's beliefs, and guide everybody to a conclusion that is best for everybody, which means a therapeutic resolution so that the earthbound spirits can rest in peace and the humans can live in peace. So tell me in the comments, did you resonate with the energy or the stories in ghost stories? Have you seen, felt or talked with earthbound spirits in life or during a spirit releasement or spiritual therapy healing session? Are you a spiritual healer who works with people and have case studies from your own clients? So in the comments, you can share any of your stories that can relate to any of the stories portrayed in these films. If you've got any questions about some of the concepts or principles I raised or anything I omitted, feel free to ask me in the comments and we can discuss below. If you found this video too entertaining, check out my educational videos on YouTube or at my website, the Past Life Awakening Institute. I have foundation courses to learn about hypnosis, hypnotherapy, past lives, spirit releasement, and I have certification courses to gain experience in these fields and become qualified through extensive assignments and one-to-one -one video calls that we have taking you through every step of the process. If you're interested in online sessions in past life regression or spirit releasement therapy, check out my website, the Past Life Awakening Institute to book an online session.
Check out some of these other videos that cover past life regression, spirit releasement therapy, between lives therapy, hypnosis and hypnotherapy, all based on other spiritual movies. Thanks so much for watching.